tell you guys, if you miss Tuesday night men's group, it's like going to bed and waking up the day after Christmas. Because there's something always here. There's something always here. Um, I had run into Jose Vargas, our speaker tonight, um, over at the uh, at the smoothie place, at the smoothie bar. Yeah. And uh, we just got to talking, and I saw this book up on his on his counter, and it said the lead through method, mm. the lead through method. And I, I started, I, I got the book, bought the book, read it, it was an easy read, and um, mm. Mm. it made me think, you know, today we're all caught up, how many people are on social media? Not you, Ken Robinson, I know you're not on but if anybody's ever been exposed to any social media, it's all about who are you following? How many follows did you have? You know, everybody's worried about likes and, and follows. And, and I started thinking about that in terms of the men's group. And, you know, the only person we're supposed to follow is Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's who we're supposed to be following. Amen. God doesn't want us to be followers. He wants us to be leaders. Amen. We're, we're called to be leaders. And so... Um, I, don't, I, I know he's got a special word for us, but if he will also share with us a little bit about, you know, things don't always go your way just because you're a Christian. Amen. 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 Right. And, and so leading true. through it is being able to overcome life situations so you're not distracted by the enemy, you're not sidetracked, you're not detoured, and you can stay on mission. And that's what we're trying to invoke amongst the men here. We have a mission. We have a mission field outside of this building. And our goal is to develop leaders. And then when, you, when you're a leader, you develop another leader. Amen. So I want everybody to give a good, warm welcome to my brother, Jose Vargas. Wow, right, you guys are on fire. Come on. For God. Amen, that's right. It better be for God, right? Amen. So, uh, but uh, before I begin, I just want you to know that when John asked me to speak about a month ago, I've been praying for each and every one of you every single day this month. Thank you. I have been praying for each and every one of you this month. And I may not necessarily know your name, but God does, right? Amen. And I've been praying for something specific. I've been praying that God would just pour out His Spirit fresh and new over your life. And I've been praying that you would start to believe God for more. That you would believe Him for more. And that's exactly what I want to speak to you for the next few moments. Believing there is more. So, I was recently with my daughter, my oldest daughter, Evie. I was recently uh, putting together a stand-up desk for our home office. And I said put together because I'm not a builder, right? So, I was putting it together. I, you know, got it online and I was building it, and I started picking up the manual, and I was following the manual, and everything was going good. It started to look like a desk. <laughs> so I was feeling proud of myself. I was like, all right, come on now. My daughter's watching me. I'm starting to look like a desk. And it started to look like a desk, and then I got, something happened along the way. I started to believe, somebody say believe. Believe. I started to believe that I no longer needed the manual. <laughs> You guys are laughing because you're with me on this. I started to believe that I no longer needed the manual to build this thing. And so I tossed it aside and I said, Daddy has this, Evie. Daddy has this. And I started to build it and just and I was trying to play it off because my daughter was watching and I was just trying to put the screws where I thought they'd go and just trying to fit things in place. And then I started putting this little motor thing that makes the desk go up and down. And then I started noticing something looked a little off. So I was like, well, uh, I think I need to pick this manual back up. Smart. And fortunately, I realized the mistake that I was about to make, the mistake that would have costed me a little bit more time, more energy, and more effort. And so fortunately, I paid attention to the mistake that I was going to make, and all is well in the Vargas household, we have a stand-up desk. <laughs> Amen. But how many of you 
will say, hey, you're not alone. I've done the same thing. Come on. Right? Something you bought from Ikea or something you bought from Walmart or something your wife bought from Target. And she says, hey, put this together. And you're like, I got this, baby. And you start putting it together. And the same thing happens to you, right? You start to believe that you got this. And for some of you, you are great at building things. But for the rest of us, we have to follow the manual. And I'm getting better at following the manual because in the past, I had a lot of screws left over. <laughs> and I would be like, man, extra screws left over. I could put them in my screw collection. But I want you to get this. In reality, whatever you're building is missing something. So whatever you're building is missing something because you're trying to be you believe that you can do it your own way. You believe that you no longer need the manual to build what you're building. And what if, I started thinking, what if we do the same thing in our relationship with God? What if we do the same thing as we're trying to build the life that God wants us to build? I'm talking about the things that he's calling us to do, to build, to fix, to mend. I'm talking about relationships that he wants us to fix. I'm talking about marriages that he wants us to work on. I'm talking about things in our lives that he wants us to repent from and change from. I'm talking about those things that we're trying to do it on our own without the manual because we laid it aside thinking, I got this, God. And so the problem with that is that you have some parts missing. And then you're wondering why aren't things working the way you want them to work. Or you're wondering, why is my life not working out the way, God, you promise in your word? Because maybe we're building something on our own because we believe, somebody say believe, believe. that we can do this on our own. But what if God has more for us? Somebody say God has more. more. What if we believe, what if what we believe is causing us to miss the parts that would allow us to see more of God? What if, to make sure I'm talking to the right group of guys, how many of you want more from God? Say yes. yes. That was kind of weak. How many of you want more from God? Say yes. 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 I believe that when you say yes to more from God, you're also saying yes to more of God. More joy, more peace, more guidance, more love to fill your heart so that you can reflect that to the world around you. I want more from God. Now the challenge is not wanting, right? The challenge is that experiencing more from God oftentimes in our lives will require obedience in the face of new challenges. It will require obedience in the face of new challenges. And sometimes when we confront these challenges or obstacles, we tend to believe that 